Hey everyone and welcome back to Upload the Download and today we're going to go through and finalise some of the things that finished off March and the world of technology. First off though I think it's probably worth going through some of the April Fool's jokes that cascaded the internet in duh. There were so many April Fool's jokes going around. Microsoft taking shots at Google and Google taking shots at Microsoft. A Nokia microwave, tactile Google glasses, a machine that turns waste into pure gold, making lightsabers, confusing the crap out of people, 3D printing Play-Doh, BMW Pram, not to mention Google Nose Search and of course the YouTube competition which I am apparently nominated in or was nominated in. Every video on YouTube was a nominee, and there was even a live stream going on that was announcing every single nominee. Very long, tedious journey. But enough of that, let's get into some of the tech events that finished off March. So of course, the overpricing of tech products in Australia has been a much debated topic in recent times, and finally Microsoft, Apple, and Adobe came over to Australia to get completely questioned by an Australian committee to why this stuff so damn expensive over here. Pip Marlowe, Microsoft's representative, said that Microsoft bases all of its product pricing on local competition. <laughs> he also said that customers will vote with their wallets. Ah, uh, do BitTorrenters get a vote? What else are we gonna bloody vote with? Paul Robson, which is Adobe's representative, told us that the prices of Adobe products in Australia are higher because we are paying for a more personalized service as well as the running costs for the Australian Adobe website. Um, Mr. Narian, um, just a question which I know my readers are universally ask what I'm going to ask you. How can Adobe possibly justify charging up to $1,400 more for the exact same software delivered in Australia, um, delivered over the internet with no box copy? When we look at the Creative Cloud and where the future of the Creative Cloud is, the Creative Cloud just uh, announced a Creative Cloud for Teams of the Creative Cloud. Uh, I'm sorry, sir, you're, you're really not answering your question. Gee, I wonder which product Adobe is really trying to tout at the moment. Hmm. I, I think it's something to do with cloud. I, I'm not sure. I, I don't think I heard it enough in that video. Tony King, which is Apple's representative, gave a pretty human answer. Probably because of all the Apple psychology training stuff they do. He said that products are similarly priced in Australia to the way they are in the United States. And he also admitted, however, that iTunes, the store, uh, the pricing is a bit out of whack. And this is mainly because copyright holders of all the music and the media that goes on to iTunes stores uh, they're still stuck in this mindset of, if you don't live in the same country as us, we're going to screw you over. Now, of course, Samsung came out and announced the Samsung Galaxy S4, and it's touting tons of new features as well as hardware improvements, but all in the same form factor as the Galaxy S3. It has many new camera features as well as a new built-in voice-to-voice language translator, automatic screen adjustments depending on where you are and what you're viewing, group games and music compatibility between phones, you also have multi-camera recording so you can record with the front and back facing camera at the same time and also you can scroll and pause video just by using your eyes if you look up it will scroll up if you look down it will scroll down if you're watching a video and you look away it will pause the video on you and now there's also a new big s health ecosystem of exercise and fitness regimes and dieting and you know, I'm totally into that. And that's only the software. To say some of the hardware, you've got a 1080p resolution Super AMOLED screen, 8 core processor, 2 gigabytes of RAM with a 13 megapixel back facing camera. Tons of new stuff, pretty snazzy, and it kind of irritates me that so many people were complaining that it's not really an upgrade just because it doesn't look different. Consumer logic is that something has to completely look different for it to be a new product. It's not how it works, people. Now into some Google stuff. Google was quite busy in March, and one thing they did was uh, announce that they're discontinuing Google Reader. <laughs> Google Reader is cool. I have the widget on my phone so that I can get all the news updates from my computer science class right on my phone. <sighs> Why would you get rid of it? But apart from hacking off the limbs of Google Reader with a chainsaw, they also said that they're releasing a new initiative to help webmasters who have had their websites hacked. As Google's many internet bots scour the internet and sticky tape and pin up and hold and grab and shove everything into its search results, it will now look for suspicious activity and then if something's a bit amiss, maybe your website's been accessed and you don't know about it, they're going to contact you using any email address attached to your website. From there you can then be directed through a series of steps to get your website up and running again completely hacker free. Or at least until they 
figure out how to hack it again. Finally, in Google News, there has been a lot of talk about top-level domains. Now, last June, ICANN, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, uh, they announced that they're going to be releasing more top-level domains for people to use on websites and that, you know, companies should come in and get their first pickings. Top-level domains are the endings in internet addresses. So www.thisisawebsite.com. You've got .net, .gov, .it. You've got these kinds of addresses that go on the ends of websites and now there's going to be even more of them. You know, for example, .blog, .gmail, .google. Instead of typing in Let's say I had a website, you can now go ben.blog and that would be my blog. Google has been jumping in and trying to grab as many addresses as it can and fighting for them. Of course things like .blog are going to be very popular because they're kind of generic so many different companies would probably want to buy that top level domain. But it's possible that Google, when it buys these in, it will actually give us the right to use them. For like example, YouTube channels might actually be, you know, ben.youtube and then it will link to my page. Who knows? Next up, the American TV network HBO, which is responsible for the show Game of Thrones, has announced that they're going to be making their show more legally accessible worldwide in an attempt to down piracy. Game of Thrones is the most pirated TV show on the internet, with more than a million illegal downloads. It's definitely caught the attention of the overlords of the show. While some of the people that work on the show said that it's sort of a compliment of sorts, that it's so popular online illegally, they really do want to make it so that more people have access to it around a similar time that it airs in America. However, despite being heavily torrented, apparently the DVD sales of Game of Thrones haven't really been affected at all. Which I actually reckon says a lot more about the people that are torrenting the show than you think. They obviously just want to watch the show and they're quite willing to pay for it, but they don't want to have to wait months and months to get it. So there we go, I hope I didn't miss anything majorly important apart from the PlayStation 4 being dissed out by NVIDIA. Apparently it's got pretty par average parts obviously it's a console now of course i'm going to run through a few more news stories to finish off this episode thanks so much for watching i really appreciate all of your support nearly 600 subscribers pretty good uh, i've got some new videos planned i've purchased something over here which is brilliant last tech news video i spoke about how it is now illegal in america to unlock your mobile phone from a carrier but it seems that maybe there is luck out there because a petition signed by people all across America was sent into the White House and Obama administration looked at it and maybe, just maybe, it will be legal once again. A morgue in Chicago, Illinois has decided that it would be a cool idea to upload pictures of unnamed bodies to its website. While they're at it, maybe they should make an iPhone app. Identify dead. And finally, are you worried about your phone being hacked? Because as it turns out, if you live in Antarctica, you're probably more prone to it. German security researchers found that if you freeze a phone below negative 10 degrees Celsius or 14 degrees Fahrenheit, you actually are able to access data on the phone that was previously unaccessible. What's even more hilarious is that the program they designed in order to access the data off of these frozen mobile phones is called Frost. So there we go. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Upload to Download. Do comment and let me know what you think. And I will see you all in the next episode of whatever it is. And yeah, I'll see you all later.